What's up, guys? RV Tech Pro. Eh, doing a little clean up from Saturday. It's Sunday. It's working on an aqua hot for most of the day on Saturday. Has multiple issues. And uh, pouring down rain. So I tend to try to look at the bright sides of situations. And I was like, well, since it's raining, the good thing about that is I get to try out my rain suit. Not so good thing is I just got truck done and most campgrounds are dirt roads and gravel. So, but it's okay. The inside still looks nice. And, but yeah, I got to test out my suit and uh, pull it out. Throw it over there. They're really good. I mean, I've, I've worn it several times. Um, this is the first time I was like hours in a rainstorm in it, and uh, it did pretty good. Um, these these blundstone boots, my right foot got wet. All right, so to deal with these boots is, and I knew I sh I probably shouldn't have worn, but it was kind of warm that day. You see how open the boot is. Uh, so it's easy for water to get into and so what happens is I'm, I'm on the ground I'm standing up I'm bending down I'm, I'm all over the place and the pant leg even though it could wrap around and tighten up with the velcro what happened was for me moving around uh, the pant leg pulled up and the water got in the boot I typically wear those thorough goods is the ones I have now. Uh, for the last couple of years, I was doing I was doing the Georgia boots, but I've since switched to the Thoroughgood after because I can't get more than seven or eight months out of the uh, Georgia boots before they're great for like the first eight months, and then by the ninth month, uh, one, one of my feet are wet. But anyway, I wear like eight inch boots, so if I had on my eight inch boots, they would have came up to here. So even when my rain gear it's pulled up like this, I still would have been protected. So nothing against these boots, which turned out to be some really good boots. Um, I wear out boots pretty quick. They got to be pretty durable to last in my line of work. Um, but I don't know how much longer they will last because I, uh, like I said, a pair of boots for, for what I do, they, they gotta be really durable, man. And um, these are kind of, I believe, a little more form than function. So they look really nice. You know, they're all leather. It's quality manufacturing, everything. But slip on, no. But it's it's more it's it's more for looks than it is for like nitty gritty. You know, get down and work, do what you gotta do. They're a nice looking boot. And they work okay, but they're not for a hardcore guy that's really working. Like, you're really working them, they're not really for that. Anyway, this bag was literally sitting in the rain for, uh, and, and this Vito uh, accessory bag, the TR1. This has been working out good. And this is, it's like this because I just threw everything in the truck because it was raining. It's out there for like three, four hours, disassembling, reassembling, you know, doing your own stuff, you know, aqua hot. And uh, I didn't get to put my stuff up. So this is all the stuff that is kind of threw in the front seat without uh, putting it back in its perspective places, which is a big no-no for me. But extenuating circumstances, guys. So I want to see if everything got wet and rusted out because this bag was like literally in the rain for hours and uh, I hadn't opened it since. Take a look. Dry. Snap on a little rusty. And I can still, there's a little moisture on that. Still worked. You, you you can even see 
the moisture because that's at you know while I'm working out of the bag at certain points it it was open. And, I mean, yeah, yeah, I gotta work out of the bag while it's open, so it's gonna get wet some on the inside. Yeah, you can see the moisture in there. So what I'm seeing is I don't think water was getting in the bag after it was closed. I think this is the rain that was just blowing and getting in there while it was uh, open. Still looks okay. It's starting to rust. That bit looks good. And then I'm missing stuff, so I mean, I gotta put my Nipex back in there, my wire strippers, which, guys, these come in handy so much in tight spots. If you use them a lot, they're not gonna last very long. If you're lucky, you may get a year out of them, probably a little less. If you use them a lot, you'll get a little less than a year out of them. But they have like, I don't know what the warranty is, but this is the second pair that are warrantied out. So I sent them back. They charge you $10 to send it in, but I, I send it anyway. Um, it's a warranty. I don't think that they should charge you to use the warranty, but they do. So I think they make you pay the shipping or something. So that, that that's, that's what I mean by that. But yeah, it, the bag did did really good because uh when the bag is closed the inside of the bag is dry and as you can see the moisture on the tools and stuff so the water was getting in while the bag was open but uh you can even see down there on that my torque screwdriver but you can tell that water wasn't uh breaching the bag while it was closed, which is awesome. That's what I basically, that's one of the main things I wanted to see. The kind of, you know, the bags are nice. Most people have nice things to say about the Vito bags. I've been using them. You guys know how I rock. I buy the stuff with my own money. And uh, e even if I didn't, I'm still gonna give it an honest review, but I, but I always buy the stuff with my own money. Uh, and I tell you, if, if the thing is bad, I tell you. If it's not performing right, I tell you. You know what I'm saying? I let you know what the real deal was. So when it first started raining for the first 10 or 15 minutes, the bag was open. And then uh, I began to close the bag when I wasn't actively using it. And then it sat in the rain. Closed. I took the tools out that I needed to use. And then I closed the bag up and left it on my walk table, which is in the rain, directly in the rain uh, for at least three hours at least three hours guys and no water got in the bag so that's pretty awesome this thing like i said it's been working out good uh this is a tr1 and I, I, this is a quick way for me to get to my leads so instead of having all the leads just balled up and stuffed into here i simply just keep my meter in here parasitic draw tester and a uh, non-contact voltage tester and the leads which I'm going to stick one set of leads in there it's a little easier this was standard leads I'll probably get a set of standard leads and stick in there but anyway the rest of the leads I just I just come and I open this and get the different things that I need for what I'm doing so the last thing I was doing on that one was uh doing some component tests. So I had this set up to work off of my 12 volt battery to uh, actuate different devices to see if they were good or not. Because uh, like I said, several problems with that aqua hot and there's something in there in between the control board and the buck booster that was burning out a combustion pit. And then I saw that the buck booster also at the very end during component tests found that it had a dead short in it because a lot of white smoke started coming out of it <laughs> after it uh, was uh, being tested. So, uh, yeah, I, I keep my leads in here and I just go straight to this bag. 
pull out my leads. Those are my standard leads. These are my double, uh, but banana jack leads, my piggyback leads. Those are my fluke leads. And then these are my alligator clips and my magnetic attachments. And down here, I keep different little attachments like those back probing and then the super thin back probing, stuff like that. Keeping it like this is very useful without having to pull out my big kit. So I have a big fluke kit that has like a thousand leads and attachments in it that I don't like to pull out unless I'm pulling out the big yellow case with all the different meters. Uh, this is the major stuff and this has been working out great. It's not super packed because as you saw in my video when I reviewed this, oh yeah, this is made in USA, but if you pack this tight, you can't close it the way that they have the mechanism. But if you have a moderate or modest loadout and you don't pack it really tight, then it can close up fine and, and you can use it with the, uh, with the little latch that, that they give you. So I typically, I don't have a problem getting this open and closed with the amount of stuff that you see in here now. Still good. <laughs> I just literally pulled all this stuff out the front seat and some of it was still wet. Um, talk about these, make sure they're all in there. And as you can see, Still got water droplets and stuff because stuff in the rain. But all that's in there, and that's basically what I'm doing. Bam. Yep. To see that, well, obviously, rain working. So that's why this thing has a lot of water in it. But because the sockets are chrome, it didn't hurt them. That's half inch. But you could see on the palm ratchet, and somebody did ask, was the palm ratchet made in the USA? As you can see, the palm ratchet is made in the USA. The anvil had a little bit of surface rust, and uh, just from, from wiping the water off the top just now, it, it came off. So that's, that's pretty impressive um, that the rust came off that easy. I'll probably leave that open and let the wind kind of dry it up. So you kind of see some of the stuff that I was using to work on that. This flashlight, they don't, my stuff don't stay on this truck. Stuff don't stay looking real new for long. Um, cause, cause I, I have to use it a lot. And a lot of times I don't have time. I don't have time. It's not like a toolbox where I can, wipe it all down and I'm in a controlled environment and I can clean it all up before I put it away. This stuff gets handled a little rougher. So this stuff kind of really gets taken through its paces. But my point in talking about it is like they put it on a surface and feed it. Bunch of gold shavings stuck to the back and part. In about two, two and a half hours died. I had to, but because I have extra batteries. I was able to switch out and get another battery. And that was super helpful because the light is good and it is helpful. Uh, being as big as it is turned out to be an advantage because I could do stuff like this to where I would like balance it in between things. Like in the compartments, I should wedge it and stuff and, and it could stay like so i'm cool with it i use a lot of flashlights they get a lot of charge cycles and after a while they don't hold the charge well after so many charge cycles they they just don't hold the charge anymore um this drill actually it's an impact driver I'll show you the model number on that dcf 801 it's an extreme subcompact series the one with the buttons on the top this is awesome guys Small, compact, gets into spaces. I have one with even a shorter head. It's a 20 volt model though. So the bottom end is bigger. And uh, I don't use that nearly as much as this 12 volt one, 
because I like to be able to snatch the battery off and use it as a power supply uh, while I'm working. So the I do have one with a shorter head. Some, I keep it in the truck. Sometimes I pull it out if this one won't fit. But nine times out of ten, I'm grabbing this guy because... I can use the battery as a power supply. So that's why the leads were set up like they were earlier is because I just take my drill, pop off the battery, use it as a power supply, test components while I'm working on stuff because most of your electric components on um, the camper is going to be 12 volt stuff. You know, obviously not the 120 volt stuff. Talk about everything else, everything that works while you're boondocking. So, yeah. I surprised these didn't uh these didn't rust up and they uh mine have with much use they're a lot looser than they used to be. Now I'm I'm even though they don't just drop down with that because sometimes I want them to be kind of stiff so I can hold a position as I get them into some place so that I can have because I'm just doing one hand and then I can kind of manipulate them and uh do what I need to do. So I'm cool with this level. They they easily open and close. Of course, uh, my daily drivers, the Nipex Cobra, uh, whatever these are. There's a part number, the 125, and these snap-ons. Awesome pulling fuses and using as a uh, this is a small pair of slip joints. I normally keep these in my pockets depending on if the jeans that I'm wearing have a uh, coin pocket that is big enough for both pairs. If I only have to go with one, then of course it's gonna be the Nipex. Cause those, I've been using those a lot longer. Extensions, you know, those aqua heights are deep. So when you gotta disassemble stuff, it helps to uh, have something to give you the length so i keep a couple of those extensions and then this got a little rusted it's a, a husky quarter inch anvil that i keep in this kit the point kit which those <laughs> all this stuff got rusted i mean working in the rain man but snap on uh Eighth inch Allen key kind of held up pretty good to say that it was uh it's all wet and and uh trap moisture when I close the kit. Obviously the moisture is trapped inside, so it just sits on the tools. And this is the newest snap-on bit. That's just how they're gonna look, man. Um I spray them down with oil sometimes, I'll clean them up because I just don't like that, and I'll uh I'll take like a wire wheel and and uh, clean them up, spray them down with some oil, and, and they'll be fine. I've I've done it before. All right, what else we got? Uh, my little uh, flush cuts. Hold on, guys. My bad. Had to take call. Uh, where was I? I think I was talking about the rust and stuff and and the pliers, which are good. All right, so. Yeah, these uh, which are icon. So you can see, I, I got a couple of icons. Uh, these are their uh, <laughs> man. These are like really stiff, but like after working with them in the rain, it didn't got loose. That's good. So, uh, but anyway, I keep these. They're fine. I got a snap on ones too. Like like these are snap on, and um, I got another bag. And I said, uh, I normally run um nipex on uh for the dikes so i uh i keep a pair of nipex in every bag diagonal cutters because they're super loose and um they're one of my favorites uh side cutters uh nipex i i really enjoy their side cutters and i have like all the reasonable sizes of the cobras those are they're those are awesome you guys know I'm not a fan of a pliers wrench uh, for anybody. I, I, I have the Icon ones. I don't use them. I took them off the truck because they're useless. But um, for what I do, 
the uh, the Wira, that that adjustable wrench, way better. It, it's nice. But uh, I hear a lot of people they 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 get a lot of use out of the plier wrenches. They like them. I, I just too bulky in my hand. I like just having that handle of a like a adjustable wrench style handle. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is my stuff. This is what I was working with. All worked out good. My RV guys, grab you some of these. Uh, so when you have to work on the gas system, I keep some plugs. This is a, a three eighth flare plug for gas, and I keep the half inch. So when you gotta work on, a, if you gotta take components out and work on the gas system, uh, you can leave your customer still in service. So you pull a furnace and you got to take it back and work on it. You can plug the line. It's safer for them and they can keep using the rest of the camper, especially like if they have two furnaces, you can plug the line. They can still use the other furnace. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's something that I always do. And it also helps me to use those on my uh, four way uh, manometer tool, my test tool rig to set it up in different configurations. All right, now this guy, uh, which I bought because of uh, a review on the torque test channel. Um, this is a skill power core. I also have the Milwaukee 12 and uh, the Milwaukee, the head is a little slimmer, but on this one, the grip, is better it's easier to handle it. it this one's longer and the the grip is better uh on this one the only problem with this one is which is pretty irritating is that i'm gonna grab the milwaukee while i'm talking about it the problem with this one is sometimes so so here's a milwaukee the thing will like cut out the skill will cut out under very low load. It's just, and then I, ch I checked the battery, and the battery is good on the thing, but uh, two bars. But yeah, like you'll be, you'll be like doing something with a fastener, and it'll just it'll start flashing at you, like it'll be going into cutout mode for no reason at all. And I mean, it immediately you let go of the trigger and go again, and and it and will continue working, but. Oh man, no matter how long this guy's, this thing's gonna last, you know. Yeah, it has some advantages over the Milwaukee as far as it ha it can do more. It won the challenge on the torque test channel, okay, which is why I bought it because it was the most powerful right angle impact that they tested. But as you know, I keep it in this toolbox, which is pretty secure as far as moving around and stuff. I mean, it's in the toolbox, but it's, how much can it move around inside there with all the rest of this stuff? So it's not like it's getting jumbled around. And But, you know, I use it in the field a lot, and I just don't think it's going to hold up. Judging by uh, the cutout issues, I, I just don't think it's going to hold up. So that's why... I still got the Milwaukee. And uh, like I said, see this grip? It it gets hard when you got to... This one, when you get down to holding it at the bottom. On the Milwaukee, you're basically kind of gripping the battery. But on, on the skill, because of how it's, it's made, you have a much stronger grip. And you can kind of... You can easily one-finger it. And, and engage the trigger and hold on to it without losing it versus uh, my Milwaukee um, because, you know, it's nothing else there. So if I was in a very tight, tight spot, the Milwaukee, I could probably slide it in better, the Milwaukee. So I, I keep them both. I run them both. Uh, they got their strengths and their weaknesses. This is one of, another one of my veto bags. And uh, what's it called? I don't know. I think it's the mag pouch or something. And and I keep, see, uh, it does that, which is nice. 
because when I'm working on something and I got to keep going in my connector bag, I can leave the bag open, throw it on a metallic surface, and it, it holds the bag there, much like all the straps on my multimeters. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's what we got. Um, I will pull out the laptop and do like the Q and A and go through the comments, even some of the dumb ones. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people leave some some whoppers of comments sometimes, man. I truly believe, I don't know, I guess with the trolls or whatever, people were telling me about the trolls and whatnot. Maybe it's some of it is just like somebody is just going around watching videos just to find something negative to say, which makes me feel like, man, your life must not be very, very good. Uh, even if I don't like something, I, I totally don't just leave unconstructive criticism or negative comment is for the sake of it and especially not uh uh highly offensive things uh, but people suck and uh i get reminded of that every time i go to my inbox to read the comments sometimes but many times i spare you guys and i just go ahead and delete them so but if they're a lot of the negative comments, I don't mind if they're constructive and they're not uh, demeaning or uh, stuff like that. Like if the person just not being a total, you know, so yeah, there's that. But yeah, this SK kit still running strong, baby. Made in the USA. Got rid of the ratchet using the Mac ratchet and it's not made in the USA but it's a much more useful ratchet for me and it's 90t so that's been working out good uh this didn't come with the kit this is a uh a williams made in usa a little spinner i do use it i've used everything in this kit this is a good kit and because it's so good and it goes all the way up to 15 where a lot of quarter sets will stop at 13 or maybe 14, this one goes to 15 shallows and deeps and goes to 916 in SAE shallows and deep that I rarely have to pull out the proto kit, the 3 8 kit. But yeah. Oh man, these guys, they sell these at, uh, at Lowe's, it's Craig. You know, we use those square head fasteners in the... Uh, campers and this is a really good set because i've been having problems with low quality screws these never ring off man like uh those hillman they sell these these screws they're called hillman's and they look just like the the camper screws which uh normally you get those and they're like a and p products kind of expensive but <laughs> there's a reason why they're expensive <laughs> they don't snap off those Hillman screws, man, they snap off so easy. They're so cheap, man. I'm pretty much throwing all of them away. I just bite the bullet because I bought like a bunch of them, not knowing the quality of them. And uh, uh, then I started buying Tex, T-E-K-S. -T I started buying that brand because much more quality, stronger. Uh, fasteners and then these guys these are good i don't have a problem with these and as we can see you know different lengths different sizes you can also use them for like pocket holes and uh but oftentimes you're gonna find like a washer head uh fastener in the campers and this is a really good kit for that so i think that's all i got that's all i got out here but uh you guys be good. Catch you on the next one.